Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to 32 Manias with Mike. Oh, man, here we are, guys. WrestleMania 3. Uh, oh, this is, this, is, this is a biggie. It's a biggie. It's uh, 93,173 big. Yeah, that's the attendance. And uh, that marks WrestleMania first, the first time they come out and tell us the attendance. Happens more and more now, but it started WrestleMania 3, and they've been trying to top it ever since. And, well, they did so last year thanks to uh, Jerry Jones and a huge-ass stadium in Dallas. But considering this was in March 29th, 1987, record stood for whew, a long-ass time, uh, almost 30 years. So, you know, not too shabby. Um but yeah, uh, one thing I didn't talk about on WrestleMania 2, and I need to address it here because I'm going to talk about Aretha Franklin. Uh, WrestleMania 2, Ray Charles did America the Beautiful. He was goddamn amazing. Um, I'm going to go on record. I think it might be my favorite performance at WrestleMania. I think it might be. Um, if I come across another one that I like better than Ray Charles... I'll mention it, but right now I think Ray Charles probably takes the cake with all the America the Beautifuls I remember. Um, but Aretha Franklin performed WrestleMania uh, America the Beautiful this year, and she's fantastic. She's Aretha Franklin. She deserves a little R E S P E C T. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, fantastic. And I have to keep remembering uh, who performed uh, America the Beautiful at WrestleMania because they get a lot of A listers. A lot of A-listers, guys. Um, so, <sighs> WrestleMania 3, where do I even start with this? I mean, Hogan and Andre, you guys know that's the match. That's it's not the match everyone talks about now. It's the match everyone talked about then. Um, but let's, let's run down the whole card. First of all, I was listening to um, Talk is Jericho, and he had the Brooklyn Brawler on. And I wish I could have gotten to see this, but apparently the dark match before the show um, featured Brooklyn Brawler. And he was the first guy to stand in the middle of that ring in front of the 93,000 plus. And I would just love to see his face. Like, that guy was the first guy to stand in the middle of the ring and see the jam-packed arena. That would have been awesome to see. But, um... So I talked about last uh, WrestleMania 2. It didn't really have a hot start. Oh, boy, did they make up for that with this one. Uh, we we opened up with the Can-Am connection of Rick Martell and Tom Zank against Cowboy Bob Orton making his WrestleMania debut in a match despite being at both the first two WrestleManias. And uh, Bob Orton team with Don Morocco. And it was a really fun match. Very, very fast-paced. Um... Again, this WrestleMania had 12 matches in it, so not a lot of them are very long. Uh, we kind of get into longer matches a little bit later on. But um, about, about a six-minute match. It was really, really fun. Uh, the Canada Connection won. A uh, lot of high-paced offense. And I got to say, we got Gorilla and, um, Gorilla and Ventura on commentary. They do a fantastic job. At some points, they're joined by Mary Hart. Uh, who was on entertainment tonight, I believe. And you can tell she actually has, like, she's a she's a broadcaster because she may not know everything about wrestling, but she does a really good job. She does a really good job. Bob Uecker joins them in commentary for a few matches, does a really good job. Uh, it, it's Bob Uecker. He's Mr. Baseball. He's, he's fantastic. Um I mean, if you don't quote Major League at some point in your life, then what the hell are you doing? Listen to me. Go watch Major League and go learn just a bit outside. Anyway, we move on from there um, to a battle of the full Nelsons, believe it or not. Uh, no, Chris Masters is not involved in any of this. In fact, pretty sure he wasn't even born yet, or if he was, he was a few months old. Uh, <laughs> Billy Jack Haynes versus Hercules. Um, uh, you know, WrestleMania, we give WrestleMania a bad rap, 
for sometimes having not finishes that we would like to see. Like if a certain guy goes over that we don't want to see him go over. I'm glad they don't do this kind of stuff anymore, though, because yet another double count out. There are a lot of matches like that don't have finishes, like good finishes at WrestleMania. At least the first three, from what I've seen so far. Like, I'm not sure if it's just to keep the house show circuit going, but I mean, even now we look at WrestleMania as mostly a culmination of a storyline, mostly. Um, it's not the case early on, I don't think. But yeah, uh, Billy Jack Haynes and Hercules wrestled to a double countout because Billy Jack locked in the full Nelson on the outside of the floor. Both guys got counted out. I mean, it was a good match. It was fun. Bobby Heenan is... Bobby Heenan and Jimmy Hart are the MVPs of this WrestleMania because they are all over the damn place. It's fantastic. Uh, but we move to the next match, and... If you know anything about me, you know this next match warms my heart. It's Hillbilly Jim, the Haiti Kid, and Little Beaver going up against King Kong Bundy, Little Tokyo, and Lord Littlebrook. Uh, if you don't, if you only recognize two names in that, don't feel discouraged. It's just a little misunderstanding. Kidding. It's a midget match. It's a six-person midget match. We have Hillbilly Jim and King Kong Bundy. They're only allowed to wrestle each other. And the Haiti Kid and Little Beaver are um, midget wrestlers, so are Little Tokyo and Lord Littlebrook. It's it's great. Um, it's really not like it's not a sign, it's not a technical masterpiece. Uh, there there are some cool midget wrestling spots. Like they do the double crisscross, they do like a little canoe thing with like pulling the legs of the other guys apart. It's weird. But you guys, Little Beaver is a gamer. Um, <laughs> Little Beaver just keeps attacking King Kong Bundy. And, it, like, you want to see Little Beaver do it, but at the same time, you don't. Because, uh, and strictly speaking, if the referee is going by the rules here, the first time Little Beaver attacked King Kong Bundy, it should have been a disqualification right away. The referee only calls for a disqualification when King Kong Bundy finally gets fed up and just body slams Little Beaver and drops an elbow on him. Um, then, you know, all the midgets rally against King Kong Bundy and Hillbilly Jim knocks him out. And that's basically the match. Uh, it, it's it's fun. You know, it's a, it's a nice... It's a nice palate cleanser. Uh, because the next match, we get a pretty fun match. Uh... The King, Harley Race, accompanied by Bobby Heenan and the Queen of Wrestling, the Fabulous Moolah, goes up against the Junkyard Dog. And uh, it's a regular match, but the loser must bow to the other one. Uh, must bow to the King after the match. And, you know, I know a lot of people in the arena didn't like the call. Harley Race wins. And I gotta say I'm okay with that. Um, J JYD had the curtsy, and then in the grand tradition of WWE faces being horrible people, Junkyard Dog attacks Harley Race from behind. You know, it happens. JYD looks victorious. He went, you know, he's standing tall at the end, even though Harley Race won the match. But, uh, yeah, so we move from there to the Dream Team. Greg Valentine and Bruce Beefcake, former tag team champions. Uh, they're accompanied to the ring by Johnny Valiant and Dino Bravo, and they go against the Rougeau brothers. And although they don't have their song yet, you better believe my ass saying, they're all American boys. Ding, ding, all American boys. Yeah, they're not the fabulous Rougeau brothers yet, but they're on their way. And by on their way, I mean they're in WWE. WWF, excuse me. And... um. This was kind of an interesting match because you have Dino Bravo uh, interfering with the ref, with the ref not looking, causing the Dream Team to win, and Greg Valentine looks fine with this. Brutus Beefcake uh, isn't, and that's because guess what? We just had our first face turn, I believe, at a WrestleMania. That I believe the first face turn 
at a WrestleMania was Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Uh, it's not really explained why, or if, if it was, maybe it's something in context I didn't get because I didn't watch the shows leading up to it. But um, Greg Valentine, Johnny Valley, and Dino Bravo definitely leave Bruce Beefcake behind. And you'll see in the next match, ooh, he's definitely a face now. Because um, the next match is a bunch of firsts. Um, it's Rowdy Roddy Piper versus Adrian Adonis. Now, it's the first ever hair versus hair match at WrestleMania. There will be another way down the line. I was there. I remember it. But uh, this one, this this is a great match. And it's also another first because it is the first ever fake retirement matches. That's right. We are told beforehand that this is supposed to be Roddy Piper's last match. and We will never see him in the ring again. It's a lie. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lie. Of course it is. But uh, Roddy Piper... And Adrian Adonis, both men use sleeper holds. So it kind of makes sense for the hair versus hair stipulation. And um, Adrian Adonis actually looks like... They do a really good false finish here. Um, Adrian Adonis locks in the sleeper hold on Piper and releases the hold before Piper's hand drops for a third time. Haven't seen that false finish ever, I don't think, besides this match. Really, really good. Adonis celebrates. He thinks he's won the match. And because there's no theme music at this point, he has no reason not to think he has. But uh, Bruce Bar Beefcake comes out, wakes Roddy Piper up. Piper gets out there, slaps the sleeper on Adrian Adonis. Adonis passes out and snip, 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 snip. And Beefcake's um, face turn is complete. We're told that he had a beef with Adrian Adonis at some point. I'm not really sure what it was. I didn't catch that part of it. But uh, yeah, and... Roddy Piper, and I have to say this, Roddy Piper, one thing about WrestleMania was in the Pontiac Silverdome. Really long entrance ramp because it, the place is fucking huge. And everyone up to this point had been had come out to the ring on these little ring carts, which I think they should bring back. Not for everyone, but I think occasionally one or two people using that would be really cool. Um, also, we, we need to point out that do you know the the people who take like the ring coats and stuff like that? You know, it's usually Timekeeper or something like that. We have a WrestleMania first, and I think a WrestleMania last here, um, because there are these girls dressed in skimpy outfits, kind of like uh the Ice Girls at like hockey games. They're called the Federettes. Never heard of that before. That's a new one on me, and I've watched these WrestleManias before. But, uh, yeah, I don't think that ever happens again. I'm going to keep an eye out because uh, we're going to Trump Tower in in a few in, – in, in, in a year in WrestleMania 4. And if there's an excuse to put blondes in skimpy outfits, you know Donald Trump's going to do it. Um, but, yeah, uh, but back to my original point, Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper was the first guy – to not use one of these little ring carts. Now, I thought I remember hearing somewhere that the ring cart had broken down at one point when Piper was supposed to go out, so he just walked. Even if that's not true, I enjoyed seeing Roddy Piper just stroll out through that awesome crowd for the for the for his entrance. It was really really great. Um, all right, so moving on. You know what's funny? We didn't have a lot of title matches on this show. There were two title matches, guys. That's it. That's it. Two titles matches. Just the two singles championships. Uh, Mula didn't even defend her belt. But yeah, uh, so moving on, we do have the Hart Foundation, the current WWF Tag Team Champions, and Dangerous Danny Davis going up against the British Bulldogs and Tio Santana. Now, um, the story here is that Danny Davis was a referee got banned from being a referee because of decisions he made. He basically handed the Hart Foundation the belts. He cost Tio Santana the Intercontinental title against the Macho Man. And really fun match. Um, Matilda's out. Matilda goes after Jimmy Hart. Um, there's a lot of really good six-man stuff here. And eventually, the Megaphone becomes involved, and Dangerous Danny Davis gets the win over Tio Santana. Uh, <clears throat> really, really fun stuff. And uh, really enjoyed seeing. 
excuse me, really enjoyed seeing the um, the the Hart Foundation and the British Bulldogs because I don't think they ever got a real big platform like this to work together against each other again. And they work flawlessly together, as you would imagine. I mean, it's Brett, Davey, and Dynamite. And Jim Neidhart, for his part, does really well, too. All right, so moving on. Um, the Doctor of Desire, Slick, makes his first WrestleMania appearance. And I could not remember who he was managing at this time. And then the natural Butch Reed comes out. Butch Reed is freaking awesome. If you guys haven't seen Butch Reed before, go watch some Butch Reed stuff. He's really great. And uh, he, co he comes out, and he's going against Coco Beware. You know, I realize this. A lot of heels won. A lot of heels won this WrestleMania. I'm looking at the card right now as I'm writing it down for you guys. A lot of heels won. That's impressive for a WrestleMania because I'm looking at it right now, like, um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, six heels. One, we had two. We had one match, so it was a double count. Two matches that were DQs. Like, it, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive that like six heels won. So actually, more heels won at this WrestleMania than faces. I think that's because of the faces that won. But we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, Butch Reed, uh, quick match, beat Coco Beware. You know, Hall of Famer Coco Beware. Guys, take it easy. The Birdman was great. Um, but moving on. Oh, it's, uh, it's the Intercontinental Tile match. You know, ain't no thing. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat versus the Macho Man Randy Savage. You guys may have heard of this match. Uh, <laughs> if you're a pro wrestler, you may have reenacted this match many times in the basement of your mom's house. Uh, if, if you haven't seen this match, you need to go out and see this match right away. Sign up for the network. Find it on YouTube. Do what? Hop in a time machine. Go back to Pine X Silver Dome. Make it 93,174 people. Find a way to see this. Um, the whole story is that Randy Savage attacked uh, the trachea or the lar or the larynx, as uh, as Jesse Ventura likes to say. Of Ricky Steamboat with a ring bell. Took him out of action for several months. And Ricky Steamboat came back. And oh man. Like. I don't know if this is the greatest WrestleMania match of all time. I have a few other competitors in my brain. That I think might be better. But this is definitely the greatest WrestleMania match of all time. So far. Definitely. Hands down. No question. Um. It loses a bit of steam when you hear how much they rehearsed it because the Macho Man's a little bit OCD about things. But still, it's a phenomenal match. It's Ricky Steamboat, it's Randy Savage. And it marks the first, the first time the Air Continental Championship changed hands at WrestleMania. Ricky Steamboat, first guy who won the Air Continental title at WrestleMania. It's a great moment, great match. Uh, I don't need to talk more about it because either you've seen it and you've already heard way too much about it or you haven't seen it and you need to stop this YouTube video right now, watch it, and then come back and finish the rest because we only have three more matches to go. And the next match, now this is this is weird because the Honky Tonk Man is going up against Jake the Snake Roberts. Jake the Snake Roberts has Alice Cooper in his corner. Usually, at least nowadays, if you have a celebrity in your corner, you're winning that match. Guess who doesn't win this match? Jake Roberts. Jake the Snake doesn't win the match. It's a really fun match. Uh, it's definitely better than Jake's first outing at a WrestleMania. Um, he does get the last laugh because Alice Cooper uh, throws the snake onto Jimmy Hart, you know, as you're wont to do. But uh, it's really good, and no one gets kabonged, which is a little unfortunate. But uh, yeah, Honky Tonk Man, like you need something to kind of ease off the gas from Steamboat and Savage. And uh, speaking of easing off the gas, uh, we get the Iron Sheik, friend of the show, uh, and Nikolai Volkov against the Killer Bees, Jim Jimmy Bunzel and Big Brian Blair. This is the match you hear Ryan Sheik talk about all the time. 
because he says things about Brian Blair. I don't need to repeat them here. He guys know what he says. It's a match. It's honestly, it's okay. I was never a huge Killer Bees guy myself. I do like Sheik. Um, the re- Hacksaw Jim Duggan comes out because Hacksaw Jim Duggan in the ultimate act of jingoism doesn't want Nikolai Volkov to sing the Russian anthem. Now, granted, I, I wasn't really hip to politics at that time, so I know the Russian anthem was a little titchy with everyone. But, um, yeah, it's still kind of a dick move. <laughs> but um, basically, the Iron Sheik looks like he's going to get the win. It looks like he's going to break Brian Blair's back, make him humble. And uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan just runs in the ring and smacks the Iron Sheik with a 2 by 4 Yeah, uh, another DQ. A lot of, like I said, WrestleMania not known for uh, its good finishes at this point. And then, uh, well, we get to the main event. You guys know what the main event is. You've heard of it. Um, there may have been a whole huge thing about it, like the Irresistible Force meets the Immovable Object, uh, 15-year undefeated streak versus Hulk Hogan. Um... What I liked about this is that everyone on the show said that this probably was the match Hulk Hogan was not going to win. Like, during WrestleMania 2 when he was going up against Bundy, the faces said, oh, Hogan's going to win. The heel said, oh, Hogan's not going to win. Like, you had that dichotomy. This one, even Gorilla Monsoon was saying, you're probably right. Hogan's not going to win this. Because <laughs> it's fucking Andre the Giant. And, I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen this match. It's one of the most famous matches in history, or at least you've seen 15 seconds of it where Hogan slams Andre the Giant. Before that, it's it's not a bad match. It's, it's not nearly as exciting, I will say, as Hogan versus King Kong Bundy. I'm definitely going to, if I'm going to grade Hogan May events, which actually I probably should do at this point, um, I'd go WrestleMania 2, WrestleMania 1, WrestleMania 3. Yeah, this is the third worst Hogan match in WrestleMania history so far. Um, his matches will get better. I I know this for a fact. I've, I've seen them. But, um, yeah, it, like it, you're there for that one moment. You're there for that one moment, and there's some stuff like Hogan goes for a slam early in the match, and he hurts his back, and that's just the giant beating up on him. Hogan gets some momentum. He in a WrestleMania first, I think he pulls up the mats on the outside of the ring, and this is kind of stupid. Goes to pile drive Andre the Giant. Doesn't exactly work out for him as you can imagine, but um, yeah. And then you know the big Hulk up, the big slam, the big leg, and the victory. And I mean, props to Andre because. If most of you know, he wasn't in the best health at that point. Uh, I think I say that. I think I said that during WrestleMania 2 also. But Andre just wasn't in good shape for the most part. There was there were a lot of great promos leading up to this. I think there were two with Andre. There was another promo video with Hogan about the whole Piper's Pit thing. The story leading up to it is really great. Um, I, it's, it's a really, really fun main event. And you get the victory you ultimately won. Uh, if you, if you listen to Hulk Hogan's take on this, Hulk Hogan swears up and down. He didn't know if Andre was going to play ball, which would have been amazing. If you really think about it, if Andre just decided, no, I'm winning the title that would have floored the entire arena. That would have been amazing. Like that, that's a great. What if storyline, if you ever like to play, what if storylines about professional wrestling, what if Andre giant just said, no, nope, I'm taking the belt. That's a story in and of itself. That'd be amazing. But um, we might get to see what happens if Andre got the belt in WrestleMania 4. Hmm. We might get to see that. Maybe. But um, until then, I've been Mad Mike. If you, if you want to hit me up about these WrestleManias, I'm trying to do 32 in 32 days for you guys to get psyched for WrestleMania 33. Um, so yeah, hit me up at Mad Mike 483. 
Hit us up on the Facebook group. Email us at goodtimeswrestlingmayhemshow.com. Leave comments in these videos if you like what I'm doing with this. Uh, they're pretty much all going to go up day day by day if, if, if I've worked my math out right on this. But, uh, yeah, so um, I will see you next time for WrestleMania 4. And um, till then, I still need an outro for this thing, so I'll just start singing, uh...